We're ready to go. So we um, are. To talk to you about how um, openness has helped us address the challenge of copyright and online teaching in the time of crisis. And this and, is Chris uh, Morrison and Jane Secker calling you from the UK. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Jane, introduce yourself. Ourselves. Yes, so um, I'm Jane Checker. I work at City University in London and I'm a senior lecturer in educational development, very interested in uh, open education, copyright, digital literacies, all sorts of areas like that. And I'm uh, the uh, copyright licensing and policy manager at the University of Kent. Uh, but Jane and I are both uh, massive copyright nerds. Uh, we run the, the website copyrightliteracy.org and we also have our own copyright podcast called Copyright Waffle. So we're wearing the t-shirts today as well, aren't we? Yep, <laughs> if you can see that in the, in the, the small window. Um, but we're talking about copyright and online learning today. Yeah, so um, this is the book that we wrote um, together in 2016. Um, the first edition actually came out 10 years ago. I wrote that on my own, but Chris and I worked together. Um, so we're quite aware of some of the challenges that copyright might face when shifting teaching online. Uh, didn't really want it to be a barrier, I guess, is the main thing behind that book, because we're, we're kind of all for people understanding what they can do. And so this is our definition of copyright literacy that's in that book. It's about acquiring and demonstrating appropriate knowledge, skills and behaviours to enable the ethical creation and use of copyright material. So that really uh, kicked in and had an additional meaning uh, when the pandemic uh, uh, suddenly started to affect all our lives. Yes, yeah, so I'm just popping into the chat. This is the blog post that Chris and I wrote um, in March um, when uh, the sort of situation became apparent um, that education was going to go online. Um, so we, we wrote a post really to sort of remind people um, about the things that you could do when you were teaching online, um, about what, what copyright uh, exceptions allowed you to do and, um, you know, what licenses might be available as well. Yeah, and definitely including um, open licenses. And that led us to do what we thought would be a webinar or two on this uh, in conjunction with the Association for Learning Technology that then became a series of webinars that we've run in uh, the UK, but also with international guests looking at all the issues around copyright and online learning. So we've got some statistics. Yes, so I just popped a link into um, the recordings that are available in the listing, but since um, 20th of March, we've done um, 26 webinars so far um, and still counting. So we have a schedule now going on into the new year, uh, one coming up this Friday and a Christmas special coming up uh, the following Friday. We're averaging about 100 people, mainly from the UK, but we're very keen for international people to join um, our webinars. We run a, a mailing list and um, that's mainly UK people on that. Um, and we've seen um, that grow since we started running the, the webinars. I guess the key thing with the mailing list is it operates in a closed way so that people can ask questions in a, a quite a closed community. Um, and the thing, the difference as we'll talk about with our webinars is that we have operated most of them on a, an open basis and we've had a lot of guests come in from external organisations also not just from educational establishments, but from some of the collective um, management organisations or some of the licensing bodies. But we were absolutely delighted also to have uh, Bridget Vizina from Creative Commons um, join us. Next week, we, or this week, we have some uh, McCarthy from Europeana. Yeah, so um, one of the important things for us has been about um, creating a sense of community and supporting each other. So these are some of the things we got up to during lockdown. We also have a theme tune though as well, don't we? So I'm just going to give that a quick, a quick go. A so there's the theme tune, uh, but we really wanted to invite all those different uh, stakeholders, different people involved in, didn't we, Jane? Yeah, so I think the idea of, of kind of shifting what we have done, I guess, supporting the community to ask questions, 
um, in quite a sort of a, a, a private setting, I guess, in a sense, in that they felt that they were able to, to sort of ask some tricky questions about copyright and things that they might be doing where they were worried about, you know, some of the risks involved, where, where, how far you could stretch copyright exceptions. Um, what we tried to do with the webinar is have a lot of those conversations um, in a more open way, and that's not without challenges. So we say they're open, but if you go to the listings on our, our website, what you see is that there were a series of, of webinars that we've still held in a closed way. So they're open to people if they, they are part of our community to join, but there is still quite a lot of polarized views, I think, in the copyright space. And I, I think you know that it is true to say that the education community um, sometimes needs to talk um, you know, in, in a team where they feel that rights holders are not there um, and not sort of looking over their shoulder. But one thing we wanted to point out was a, a post that we wrote for the, the wonky blog post in uh, the website in the UK. And we were trying to draw the attention of copyright um, to policy makers uh, and, and leaders in, in higher education and point to open licensing and Creative Commons licensing as part of that mix. Um, so we had this situation, didn't we, with the, the, the main uh, CLA license. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in the UK, we have a license which covers us to scan uh, content and did quite a lot of work to get that extended um, to enable um, universities to put greater amounts of content online for students. Um, and, uh, it, you know, it actually took quite a lot of efforts on our part. Both Chris and I sit on the group that negotiates with this body to get the license extended. And, you know, we were we were aware that there, it wasn't straightforward. And I think actually what is highlighted is some really fundamental problems in the UK but around the world with, with how um, textbooks particularly um, are licensed. We had um, quite, we were quite slow to have the whole discussion about open textbooks in the UK. And I think that, that this issue has really started to highlight um, some of the problems and the challenges that universities are, are facing. So it was picked the BBC News as the ebook pricing scandal following a campaign by one of the librarians working very hard in this area to, to sort of expose this. And, and I think what, as I say, what, what we're really hoping is that this may accelerate uh, the discussions about open licensing for, for textbooks. So I think we're pretty much at time. The other things we wanted to point out, there are questions about use of film and audiovisual works that we've also uh, covered there. These are some of the other topics. And as Jane said, we did have a Creative Commons presentation, which was very useful. Uh, but the final point is that we have created a special interest group in conjunction with the uh, Association for Learning Technology. Um, and we're certainly going to be joining up with their open education group and wanting to, to make as many uh, links uh, internationally and nationally as well. Absolutely. So if you if you'd like to get involved, please get in touch. Um, our journey in copyright um, ad adventures continues. And uh, Chris and I like a bit of merchandising as well as T-shirts. We've now been making uh, some uh, copyright related uh, face masks. So but if you want to find out more about our work, have a look on our website and we do have our credits and we have um, a list of uh further readings obviously openly available so you can see what you've been up to thanks very much everybody